is the Glass Cannon Network. that time again what time is it it's time for chaos i was thinking about this this afternoon this might be the most uh varied cast in terms of our uh, respective locations uh when we started it was seven guys all lived in queens seven guys five guys one of us one of them counted for three um, there were five guys we all lived in queens and now there's people from all over but this show i think has the most people all over the place so i'm in westchester in yorktown heights about 50 minutes from the city okay you're in brooklyn right yep and Nora and Ross are in LA, but the LA's broad. We're we're yeah. we're in LA. Burbank, Silver Lake. Yeah, I'm in Burbank. Burbank. Yeah, Silver Lake. Silver Lake. <laughs> well, I, you it. I wasn't outside of your respective houses with binoculars <laughs> last week. Um, what about you, uh, Rob? You're in uh, Boulder or Denver? I'm in Denver for some reason. Denver uh, for some reason. I just ended up here. It just was wonderful. We were in New Orleans for a while, and then uh, Denver happened. Well, this leads me to my my question of the day here before we get into the nitty gritty of masks of Nyarlathotep or Nyarlathotep, as some people have attempted to correct me and Chaosium. Uh, if you could live anywhere and do what you're doing right now, would you stay where you are or would you be like, you know what, I want to I want to go someplace else? Mm-hmm. Rob, you chose Denver. Was it just like you picked cities out of a hat? <clears throat> yeah, it was a dartboard. Um, yeah, I threw several darts at the same time. No, I mean, it's, it's so boring, but it was just, you know, I'm an actor. LA was the place to be. Uh, It had been for me for 17 years or so. And then, uh, after NCIS New Orleans, uh, wrapped up, then it was sort of like, well, there's a pandemic, uh, what's important to my family and stuff like that. And LA, I don't know if you guys know this, uh, real estate and rent in general in Los Angeles is insane. Um, yeah. It's not that much better in Denver, turns out, uh, as I learned. But, uh, you know, with the whole auditioning being remote because of the pandemic and precautions around that, it just seemed like Denver, we had already had friends here. This is so boring. I feel like I'm talking about fucking... I feel like I'm explaining my parents when I made this decision. <laughs> I like, think this that. is exciting. I think people are interested. They really want to get to know you guys. But do you think, like, now that you're there... Because I hear nothing but great things about Denver. Our, our One of the founders of the network, Skid Mark, grew up in Denver, loves Denver. We're trying to get a show out there forever. Um, now that you're out there, are you like, you know what, I want to stay here? Or are you thinking, you know what, I'm going to go back to L.A., maybe New York, maybe go back home to Massachusetts? Or what do you think? You think you're there uh, for the long haul? Denver. Definitely not Massachusetts because everyone I know there is gone. So that would make no sense. Um, I do miss it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but no, I mean, I feel like, you know, with the whole acting thing, it's there's always the potential of having to move somewhere for a job. And so it just sort of made sense to find a, a home base area that we would uh, we would enjoy that would be good for all of the family and not just me. And so uh, we're digging it here so far. We've been here for almost exactly a year. We love it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Nor you grew up near where I live now, right? We found yeah. this out uh, before a show, and then you moved to LA. Do you mm-hmm. think you like it out there enough that you're like, if I want to stay here forever? forever. I mean, I, I the, the weather kind of just you get spoiled by it. Yeah, I really like it out here, but um, I don't know. And it also makes sense for my work too. But I, I don't know. Yeah, whoever who knows in the future, who knows where the winds are going to yeah. take. Nora. Uh, Especially with Kate. these prices out here for housing. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly it's still a, uh, a seller's market. Uh, the pandemic made it even worse. We want to move again uh, eventually because we got this house right before the pandemic. We just got in and like two weeks later, uh, the pandemic mm-hmm. hit. Uh, we could probably sell the house now for way over what we bought it for, but then we never will buy a, a new house. So, But I would like to move. But I'm trying to decide, do I want to stay here in Westchester or maybe move like right to that edge of Connecticut? I don't know. Kate, I feel mm-hmm. like you are legally obligated to stay in Brooklyn. Uh, um, because you look like like someone from Brooklyn. 
Oh no! And I bet you smell like someone from Brooklyn too, <laughs> which is a quite a lovely smell from what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, we've been Mantra. here for like thirteen years. It's been a long oh, wow. time. Yeah. I moved down here because I got accepted to Pratt for grad school. And then I was like, I can't afford to pay these student loans if I'm an adjunct professor. So I dropped out yeah. and worked a bunch of jobs. And yeah. You, where'd you grow up? You grew up in New York, right? Upstate New York, like Schenectady, Albany area. Schenectady, Albany. Do you think you're going to stay in Brooklyn, stay in the New York area? You got family around here? Or you're like, you know what? I'm out of here. Yeah, Kansas. I still have friends and family like upstate. Um, I was thinking about almost convinced Michael to move to Arizona, but heat, Arizona. climate change, yeah, also not great. politics. So mm. like maybe I'll just stay in New York, although it's expensive. We're looking um, upstate like in the Kingston area. That's where Michael's from. So ah, yes, very. Uh, I'm never going back to Albany. It's awful. Yeah, well, I, yeah, they got a couple good breweries. Kingston's very nice. It's a it's a little granola, but uh, they got a cute downtown. Uh, Ross, you you started. Remind me again, Chicago or Midwest? I'm from the South. Like I the grew south. up in the South. Totally wrong. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Abu Dhabi, uh, right? That's where you. Uh, that's right. I'm from, I'm from the UAE. I know. I am. Um, yeah, I grew up in like Virginia, North Carolina, mostly. But, okay. Um, so. There is still a part of me that has that like nostalgic pull. And when I fantasize about where I might end up years from now, if, if like job was no, was no impediment going, I went to college out in the mountains of North Carolina and that is one of the most beautiful places I've ever, I've ever lived. So going back to like the Asheville area is really appealing to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I love LA and I love Chicago. I lived there for 10 years. I would go back to Chicago. Yeah. I do like visiting Chicago. Chicago's great. Yeah. But now Asheville, do I need to check out Asheville? Is that's where, Asheville is that where it's rules. at? But, but much like everywhere that we're describing, it's one of these places that you you think that it's a beautiful place to live and so do hundreds of other people. So the mm -hmm. housing prices are... Yeah, Asheville, I heard, is on the come roof. up. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Asheville's beautiful. So maybe don't go to Asheville. Maybe move to beautiful Blowing Rock or Las Cruces or Boone or... Stop trying Meat to keep Camp. Asheville all to yourself, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. The yeah. cat's out of the bag. Yeah, I'm trying to drive you there so I can move to Abingdon, Virginia. Yeah, <laughs> um, it is interesting to think. Uh, you know, you could just you could just move at any moment and uproot your entire life. And the pandemic has made it where we don't really have to be where we are to do what we do. So, um, let us I mean, know if you make. We're any... doing that right now. Look at what we're doing. Right, we're doing it. We're living it. Playing games while people watch. Um, one day, one day I'll be in the same room with you. Someday. That would be Aww. nice. Not if I can help it. <laughs> that would be, I finally that would be get lovely. to like when you're in the same room with someone for the first time that you've been like speaking with over the internet and you finally see how tall everyone is. And sometimes <laughs> oh you're <God>. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I met I met Josephine special. McAdam, uh, who I play um, uh, Blades in the Dark with also on this network. I met her in person for the first time a few weeks ago. Uh, and Aww. the size differential was... Top tops. <laughs> I am, I am, she's she's a she's a a, a, a a little a little elf, and I'm a I'm a very very tall string bean, and I think both of us were like, whoa, As I, like, <laughs> stooped over to <laughs> to say hello. Well, that's funny because we've we've been hanging out now, me, uh, Ross, and Nora for over a year, year and a half at this point, and uh, we record these in advance, obviously. But we're coming to LA in a couple of weeks, and I'm going to meet you guys in person for the first time. And I, I don't know what I should do. I need a new wardrobe. Should I do a juice cleanse? I, I feel like I need to prepare for this. Yeah, Please Troy, do a juice I, you better. <laughs> I, better I mean, get it seems the like the lesson clothes. is you have to put lifts in your shoes at the very least. Right, I <laughs> guess my height is going to be judged. Well, yeah, man, I'm unless not, you want me to hold your either. head at arm's length while you feebly try to punch me. And I'm, How dare you? <laughs> you said it again. Asheville's mine, I tell you. Yep. <laughs> Uh, well, one of these days. It would be fun, you know. In my uh, sort of uh, crazy brain, I imagine this show just, uh, it, as it grows, we start doing this show live at cons uh, so that we have an excuse to meet up like twice a year and play in person uh, in front of thousands. Yeah. Um, we'll be at Gen Con. Yes. We'll Gen Con, yeah. Uh, Rob, you were talking about baby going to Gen Con too. I was talking about it, and then unfortunately my family has a trip planned. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, I might still try to sneak out for the Thursday and come see everybody. And also, I'm going to be in L.A. a week after you are, Troy, which is horrible. Gross. But, uh, so I want to hit up Ross and Nora for sure. Yeah. You yeah. absolutely should. Yeah. yeah. Build the bottom Sorry, of the pyramid. Yeah, Kate, That's you're fine. out. <laughs> 
Good and, luck in Kingston. <laughs> um, no, but this is good. We get now. We got a year to plan for a year and a half to plan till the next Gen Con. You watch. There's going to be a uh, time for chaos live. But right now, time for chaos is live, and we need to talk about last week because a lot of shit went down, and you are in the thick of it. And I'm just going to throw you right back in. Um, obviously, you're. On your way to the ruins, you're in the 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 wilds of outside of Puno, uh, near Lake Titicaca and the Andean Highlands, trying to get to these alleged ruins, uh, following a man named Augustus Larkin, who, come to find out, might be a pretty shady dude. Definite addict, definitely has a weird tattoo on his chest, and may or may not be involved with either a death cult or fat-sucking vampires uh, known to the area as Kari Siri. Uh, his accomplice, his buddy, Luis de Mendoza, you're pretty sure is a Kari Siri, a Kari Siri that attacked and killed a graduate student uh, back at the uh, university in Lima and then uh, mysteriously didn't show up to join this expedition. So he's still out there somewhere. Meanwhile, you're just keeping an eye on Larkin. You come across these alpaca farmers that were just attacked by Karisiri. The night before, one of your donkeys was attacked, presumably by a Karisiri. So they're around. Are they following you? Are they on your trail? Is it de Mendoza? What is going on? Well, you finally make it to the ruins. They exist. And you see a, a, a pyramid that's actually a lot smaller than you thought it would be. And you see two people with these gorged stomachs matching the descriptions of the people that attacked the alpaca farmers, a man and a woman, climb the steps of this pyramid and one by one, look like they were vomiting into the top of the pyramid, into some crack at the top and then coming back down. And then they walked out of sight down past a, a wall that you couldn't see over from your vantage point. At that point, you're like, we've had enough. We're confronting Larkin. What is going on here? When you met Jackson Elias back at Bar Cordano and he said, bye Larkin, bye to Mendoza, he told you the first thing. I think Augustus Larkin is leading us into danger. And so rather than go into this ruined site, you decide to confront him. And you pushed him a little too far so that something else within him, something perhaps using his body as a puppet, came out. His arms stretched out to the side. He became rigid. All of his ailments seemed to disappear. And a voice that was not his voice emanated out, uh, just speaking paeans of ultimate destruction and how you will never survive and this world will never survive. And then a tear in reality formed and some sort of weird simian insect was trying to find its way out. And all of you just bah, 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 unloaded your gun, threw fire, machetes, killed Larkin and that seemed to be the thing that stopped the tear in space-time from forming and this dimensional creature from coming out. Larkin then thanks you with his dying breath for ridding him of whatever it was that was controlling him and then he dies. And so now you're left examining these ruins. You see some heads, some long, elongated heads that uh, after a couple successful rolls, you realize also are from these Tiwanaku people, these, this strange tribe of people who no one really knows anything about, but it seems pretty clear that they built these ruins. And then years later, someone else came. Was it the conquistadors? And what did they do? And why were they built? You don't know. But rather than go through the front doors, you're like, you know, let's just take a little peek over the wall here. There's all these silt drifts that you can just kind of climb up and look over to see if you can see what happened to that man and woman. And all you know is that they walked in the direction of a giant hole, a hole full of corpses. And as you're looking down at this hole of corpses, you hear a noise behind you. You turn and you see the severed head of Larkin just floating there says something like well, something villainy like I will see you again and then his head bursts into a swarm of flies that dissipates into the air I think that's worthy of a sanity check so let's go ahead and give me a sanity check and then we'll you do the, so? uh, the weekly oh. luck roll I, I think a sanity check if I saw a floating head burst into flies I'd feel a little <laughs> off Ooh. um 
Uh, Ross, I'm pulling for you, man. I'm, I'm really hey, pulling for, for you. I, I, I got under my sanity. You did it! Fortune like, smiles on Von you Villiers. He's seen, <laughs> oh, it's something that's it just spoken in his mind. He's he's probably still processing that. And then and a fly hit. The little fly uh, fly pinata head is <laughs> just not doing it for him. Yeah, he's got other fish to fry. Uh, Rob, it sounded like a fail. For yeah, you. I failed. It's my first sanity fail. Okay, give it up for uh, first Thanks, sanity guys. fail. I mean, not uh, in real life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kate, what about you? Um, I'm still holding it together with a 14. Wow. Uh, she's going to break at some point. <laughs> K-I-T, keep it together. Uh, Nora? I just made it by two points. Oh, ho, 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 ho. All right, Rob, you're going to take only one. One point of sanity damage. That could have been a lot worse. Uh, so you're, you're a little shook by this. All right, so uh, all I'm doing is adjusting my current sanity down by one. Right, your, your, your full sanity stays one thing, but your current sanity, there should be a box for that. Uh, once again, we're using Roll20 behind the scenes. Uh, Roll20 uh, graciously hooked us up with uh, all of the Cthulhu stuff, and the character sheet for Roll20 for Cthulhu is phenomenal. Um, even though I think you guys have to calculate fifth and uh, half values. Other than that, it's great. So yeah, you take one sanity point of damage. How do you think that manifests uh, to him when he sees this, whereas the others are able to keep it together? Um, well, with just one point, uh, you know, there's been a lot so far that's gone down, obviously, that he's sort of been like, I can handle this. I've seen a lot in the streets uh, of, <laughs> of the North Shore of Massachusetts. Um, so uh, I think I think for this for a split second, uh, he sees his full uh, untarnished face floating in front of him for a moment. Um so even though it's like a horrifying, like, you know, uh, floating, you know, Larkin head, I think for a second, it just turns into hit to, it turns into Carter himself. And he just gives himself like a, a little wink. And then it's like, oh, <laughs> oh God. Yeah. And then yeah. It's, it's just gone. That would, that would crack you. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Let's everybody do a luck roll to see if anybody recovers any luck points. Uh, Spoiler alert. You're going to want to have some, some luck on hand tonight. Um, another thing, while you're rolling those, uh, something to think about. Pushed rolls haven't really come up yet. But uh, when you fail a roll, you can always try to roll it again. Um, but there are contingencies. If you fail a roll and you say, I want to push the roll, you get to roll again. But you have to tell me, what are you doing differently? And that's really just a flavor thing like what Rob did. I'm, you can't be like, well, I'm going to climb the stairs backwards instead of forwards. You know, it's got to be a little more flavorful. Uh, and the only real bad thing is if you then fail the pushed roll, something bad happens. Um, so it's a little, little high risk, high reward. Uh, just something to think about. And I don't, I'm pretty sure, um, Michael, you can let me know in the, in the side chat we have here on Skype. I think you can't push combat rolls. There's a couple of rolls you can't yeah, push. Yeah, I think I saw that. I would imagine you can't push sanity rolls. Like yeah, I, I, just I, believe, I believe that uh, combat and sanity, I think, are two. There might be three rolls you can't push, uh, just like there's certain things you can't use luck on, like sanity rolls. Anybody improving their luck today? Again, by two points, uh, I rolled 69 over 67. 69 so, over 67. Okay, so... So uh, I get to roll a D10? A D10, or a D6. yeah. Five Kate, points. how about you? Five points, great. Kate, nothing. Rob? Nope. Uh, yeah, I got it. I mean, it doesn't really matter how much over I rolled, right? Like, the fact no. that I got a 92 doesn't mean jack. Um, no, unfortunately. Okay. I got eight. Eight? Beautiful. And, uh, Ross, any luck? Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Remind me. Are we trying to roll over luck? Yeah. This is the oh, one Oh, in that case, I did it. Okay, great. Then you get a <laughs> so D10 I keep, I keep spacing on that. Okay. Yeah. One D10? Yeah, one D10. Nice. <gasps> Guess who rolled a 10? Did you get nice. Hey. Zero? There yeah. you go. Oh, um, boy. That's fun. All right. Vaughn's on the come up, y'all. Things are going on. <laughs> Everything's coming up. <laughs> yeah. I was, take... I was firing wildly in the air and no no help to anybody last night. So maybe, <laughs> maybe now it's my time to shine. I do want to say I'm not superstitious, but we're all wearing black tonight. <gasps> mm. We're ready for someone to die. I noticed. Why oh, would you man. say that, Kate? Kate? Because Why? I'm not superstitious and I don't really believe it, but I'm pretty sure someone might die tonight and we're all ready for it. <gasps> are we? Real life are we though? I didn't think I was ready for it. Anytime I've ever played uh, any most RPGs ever, 
it's always fizzled before my characters ever died, or I just wasn't there and they were everyone was pissed, so they killed me. Uh, <laughs> but which just seems fair. Uh, but <laughs> but so I've been terrified of this exact thing, Kate. And uh, but then today I had a thought about what my next character could be if that were to ever happen, and it made me feel so much more comforted. It was like Aww. like Aww. if for some reason you believe in an afterlife, great yeah. for you. I'm really that's great. Uh, yeah, I can see now. It's like, oh, that provides a little bit of comfort. Mm-hmm. Aww, that's going to come back as a butterfly with a crossbow. You, you're Don't coming to away, terms. Nora, what are you doing? <laughs> you're coming to terms with your character's death. It's so beautiful. And maybe see, my own. We'll see. Yeah. This is why these games are so profound and beautiful. Yeah. You know? They really make you look inward. You've mm-hmm. reached acceptance. Yeah. Uh, but right now they're still alive. And, and hopefully they'll live for another couple episodes. Guaranteed. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to take you to the map because I've now revealed uh, everything that you can see now that you're perched up uh, on that little silt deposit that allows you to look down. So you see uh, the pyramid, again, much smaller than you thought. You see that slit across the top that those people were vomiting into. Mm. You don't see the people around anywhere. So did they go into this pit of bodies? Uh, you don't know. Uh, and then there are these broken walls like down to the south where other ruins uh, appear to be. You know, there's a lot going on uh, over there, but uh, you tell me what you want to do. Oh yeah, the charnel pit. Oh. I mean, we just saw a floating head explode <laughs> into flies. Yeah. Yes. It really happen. makes you think. Really. So, yeah. Woody, what to do next? Well, <laughs> well, luckily, like... we can take our minds off that by looking at this horrific abattoir in the ground. <laughs> right? Uh, like, player me wants to, like, look into the pit, but I'm like, does Marco even want to do this anymore? But <laughs> right. Carter made an argument last time to get out of there and uh, got peer pressured into staying, partially yep. because it would be more interesting. So, <laughs> yeah. We could look into the pit. Is... We could look into the pit, which does not, I, nothing can go right doing that. Or we could look into that crack where people have been vomiting into. Which is going to rock. It could be a little <laughs> more, less right. Mm-hmm. Vaughn, well, Vaughn will look into the less pit. Less bad. Can Vaughn spot hidden in the pit? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're you're a little bit far, far away, um, but go ahead and roll spot here, and I'm going to say uh, from this distance, I'm going to need a hard success to really find any finer details. But let's let's right. see what you get. If you want to get closer, I'll give you a little more info. Vaughn is, of course, rattled and disturbed. Sure, but um, he he is, albeit briefly, he's he's seen, he's he's been around uh, uh, death and destruction, and it's 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 horrible. But he has he has seen it. There's a there's an eerie familiarity to what he's looking at, perhaps. Oh, I'm sure. Know. And um, and I think he actually might have done it. Let me see. Hard success, you say? Yeah. Uh, um, seventy-five is my score, and oh, that's awesome. I'm going to spend one point of luck, and I will have made a hard success. Wow, yeah. fantastic. All right. Um, so if you'd walked right up to it and, and looked up close, I would have said a regular success. I mean, maybe giving you, obviously, I mean, you're going to get more if you get a harder extreme. But from that distance to try and make out details, uh, I was going to set a baseline of hard and you nailed it. So you look in there and uh, you see that it is full of human remains and all of the bodies appear to be emaciated. Not surprising. Uh, You've Mm -hmm. seen this now uh, a lot. From that vantage point, it appears that some have been here for a long time because they're just like skeletal with only strips of of dried flesh uh, here and there uh, clinging to some of the bones. But near the top, uh, the corpses appear to be fresher. Um, they still have all uh, their skin intact, albeit emaciated. Uh, clothing that looks to be of uh, a more recent time period, whereas the, the clothing on the, the skeletons is it's uh, un- undeterminable from this distance. Um, and you also, with a hard success, even from this distance, this vantage point of looking down, you can see... <laughs> the outline of a 
tunnel in the wall of the pit, like oh. below some of the bodies, oh. leading oh. underground. So, oh, just so I see it, is the tunnel almost like at the bottom, like a well, or is it recessed into the into the sides of the pit like a door? Uh, more like a door. Like you can see it's just bodies, yeah. bodies, 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 bodies. You're assuming some sort of a bottom, but maybe not. Uh, and a hole uh, leading underground. And I mean, do these bodies, this may be more than my success would give me, but do they appear to have circular wounds? Uh, the fresher ones on the top Yes, you do see that consistent with uh, some of the other uh, bodies you've seen. <clears throat> Again, flies buzzing like a, an, a, an abnormal amount. Um, and that smell of rot and decay that you first smelled at Bar Cordano when you met Larkin. Here, it's, it's just overpowering. There's just a an awful pervading sense of, of doom and darkness here and death. Well, it's only too nauseous. I wouldn't gaze into that any longer than you have to, but if my eyes don't deceive me, there's some sort of door in the wall of that wretched pit. Carter, you had cologne, right? Or something in your pockets? I was actually just about to <laughs> offer everyone just a little dab right under the lower nose area here. Uh, I've got lilac, I think lilac would probably do the best uh, to counteract oh rotting Whatever meat. Masks this. Yes, please. Yeah, so please, yes. everyone, just take a dab. Just a little little dab will do you. Don't overdo it. Very well, Mr. Tillinghast, thank you so, so much for this nosegay. Do Ugh. that and, like, <laughs> wrap a handkerchief around my face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Carter's just, like, rubbing it into his mustache like wax. Oh, yeah, facial <laughs> hair really takes to it nicely. Yeah, um, um, Nora, you notice when Feruz wraps a handkerchief around uh, her face, it actually does help with the smell. Now, uh, Carter's like, so So let me just get this straight, guys. Okay, so we want, instead of leaving and uh, potentially guaranteeing uh, our lives continuing, uh, we want to go into the puke temple. And what do we want to do? We want to take this, these gold bits and put them back? And, and that's the idea here? Yeah, makes perfect sense. There was a time, Mr. Tillinghast, when I would have said that what you just said was so much madness, but that was before I saw what we all just saw. Okay. I, that was before a... space and time ripped apart in front of us. Mm -hmm. Who's to say mm -hmm. that thing won't follow us around for the rest of our lives? They're clearly out in the mountains and out in the, out in the forests. If I say we stand as good a chance out there as we do in here. And if we can make some sort of bloody difference in here, then... Yeah, all right. That's I, cool. I say we're all bound to do it. <laughs> And Mr. But. Tilling asked, you mentioned that you were interested in riches and gold. There should be plenty of that in spades below. Well, I keep being reminded that the only gold that we have from this place we have to put back. So taking any from this, it doesn't sound like the smartest idea in the world. Uh, but you know what? I got a soft spot for you guys. You seem, you seem like good people uh, for the most part. Um, and also I'm afraid to go back by myself. <laughs> Think I of don't. all the drinks people would be buying you, man, for the rest <laughs> of your life. That's a great point. Also, Jack Jackson, Mr. Elias, sir. Let's not forget this is. I mean, this is great novel material here that we're working on. Just, pay, just you know, the brave Carter Tillinghast leads his group of quivering cowards down now, hang into on the there. temple. <laughs> Steady on there, Tillinghast. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just shushing it up. It's fine. No, oh, you you are onto something, Mr. Tillinghast. I, I don't, uh, once again, I don't think it'll be fiction, but uh, I do feel inspired, although I share your fears. Perhaps we should go in or climb over here and, 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 and take a look at the grounds before we make any, any rash decisions. Yep. Yes. Yes, do I don't want to go into, this is a body pit, maybe? Maybe the puke pit. Maybe. Yes, well, when you put it like that, Fraulein Sauer, it neither seems particularly appealing. I, but, yeah. I will take corpses over puke. <laughs> yeah, I was oh. going to say, maybe going in body world there is uh, is the sneakier move. 
because that seems to be the the puke pit is is that's an entryway, right? People are putting puke in there. The bodies feel like this is a trash. This is like the trash. This is the dumpster. But why no one's is going to expect a, us to go through the dumpster? Why is there a door in the trash can? It's really weird. Ventilation, standard stuff, probably. Safety regulations, whatnot. <laughs> Makes yeah. sense. It was. It, it was said oh. that um, and 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 this is maybe Vaughn groping for it. Well, the gold, the spells worked in gold. Were they um? They were in tunnels in the, uh, in that, uh, in that old Codex of Gaspar, weren't they? Aren't there supposed to be a, is there, isn't there supposed to be a warren of tunnels around here? That's yeah, familiar. is this one in, in uh, Gaspar Figueroa's uh, note? Yeah. All right, let's take a look at that again and see, now that you're here, maybe there's some more information uh, that you can glean. Um, right, there's a pyramid surrounded by a maze-like structure of underground tunnels. The walls of the tunnels are inlaid with intricate gold carvings. Mm-hmm. The men pried out a large section of the gold, exhausting themselves in the attempt. These were the conquistadors. And then when they did this, uh, a sickness befell them. In the morning, they looked gaunt and deathlike. Uh, and then uh, Figaro's companions went after him, one of which was a man named de Mendo- Luis de Mendoza uh, tried to devour him like a leech. Figueroa shot his friends and ran away, uh, taking as much gold as he could. Classic Mendoza. So if the Tiwanaku... Mendoza! Mendoza if the Tiwanaku people built this and and it had any connection to a Nayara's tale of the trickster god uh, Akeko uh, trapping some evil thing down here... Did the conquistadors come and, while trying to raid it, let some of that evil out? Yes. You must. I remember from your book, uh, Mr. Hughes, that um, uh, some of these cults will make sort of protective sigil circles to uh, provide protection for them when all the, the demonic forces they're supposedly summoning. But if something was to breach such a circle, then whatever you summon might find ingress to attack you. Perhaps this is just that sort of sigil. Well, if you'd asked me that before, Mr. Villiers, I would have said these glyphs were just meaningless hieroglyphs that they would put there, that they weren't tied to any magics, because those type of things don't exist. Yes. But seeing what I've seen since the university, I'm more apt to believe your fears and concerns. Hmm. No, I, I, everything, I, everything I've said today is, certifies me to be a bedlamite, but that was before I heard him in my mind. Now, uh, Feyruz, you spent a lot of countless wasted hours book learning. Uh, wasted. Hmm. Well, did I? Oh, that part was out loud. I'm so sorry. Uh, that's a default for me. Um, do you recognize the layout of this? Do most of these places have uh, body pits? Or, or would you have any knowledge of standard, uh, you know, kind of, uh, civic an, engineering going on here? That is an excellent question. Uh, Troy, <laughs> would I be able to roll for such knowledge? Absolutely, yeah. Um, yes. What do you think is your most relevant skill? Maybe archaeology? Maybe something else you prefer? Uh, I, I Either cryptology, archaeology, or anthropology. Yeah, I like archaeology, but if uh, you could talk me into cryptology because it's more aligned with your character, if that's a better role for you. It is uh, a much better role for yeah, me if I can roll let's that. <laughs> put it to work. Um, let's see here. I rolled a 54 under 70, which is not a hard success, but it's still a success. It is a success. Um, so, yeah, in terms of the charnel pit, uh, that isn't something that is consistent with anything you've read. Um, this seems to be a newer addition or an, a bastardization of the original intent of this place. What you do recognize is that a pyramid of this size um, most likely means that uh, this part, these steps, were built uh, as a marker 
in a way, of the real uh, important part of the pyramid, which would be completely underground. Of course. Mm. Yes, the thing that I thought was very peculiar when we first arrived was that they seemed a lot smaller, Hmm. wouldn't you say? Yes. And so I was thinking about it and thinking back to my studies. And there have been instances in history where everything entombed in this in the pyramid, what you see above ground is only a tip of the iceberg, let's say. The rest like of me. it is underneath. Huh. All signs point to underground tunnels. Especially given what was in that letter, yes. I, for one, don't want to go clambering down the, um, this pit of vomit, as saw this pit of, uh, corpses. There could be another way. If it is, if it is truly a labyrinthine necropolis down there, then perhaps there are other entry points throughout the temple complex. Take it from somebody who may or may not have uh, uh, allowed himself into houses uh, uh, when I was much younger, mind you, uh, that I probably wasn't supposed to be in, uh, hmm. mostly because I didn't own it or live there. You always, you don't want to go through the front door, okay? You always want to find an entry point where people are not going to be looking for you. For me, if I lived here, if this was my pad, I don't expect anyone to go through the body pile. Very true. That is a good point. And <clears throat> if it's any comfort to anyone... I will just say that we know that these corpses are dead. We do not know if whatever's inside the vomit pit could be alive. Mm-hmm. Could be living vomit. Well, just proceed with caution. Let's let's go in the front door. Very well. Wait, wait. The front door or the body pit? That feels like... <laughs> well, the front door is uh, the the slabs where you saw those elongated. Gotcha. Heads. Okay, so we can't um, we can't you climb can over absolutely this. Uh, scoot over here because of all the sand. If you want, um, I, Jackson must have misunderstood you. He thought you Do wanted we, to go in the front door. Shall we go in the? So it sounds like the group is leaning towards clambering down into this turtle pit and yes. going in the door. It's what the fans would want. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, you can, I, what Jackson is saying is like, you can, we can walk around the grounds a little bit and then decide if you want to go into the charnel pit. Yeah, it's good to get a lay of the land. Again, from experience, you want to case the, did I say case? You want to check out the joint before <laughs> you go any further into it. Um, so do you want to go through this front door, the, the, the doors that lead from all the way to the end of the path, or do you want to just scamper over the wall here? Uh, they both look... You're, you're right near where they are. Really, it's just a flavor choice. I say scamper, because it's a good word. Yeah, it's like, oh, ah, oof. Okay. Yeah. I think you should have uh, use of all your pawns here um, on roll 20. Um, but uh, yeah, so you see the grounds here. I'll give you a little more information. Um, you've got the stepped pyramid, and each step is like five feet high. So if you did want to climb up or anything, you'd have to like, pull yourself up each step. Um, There are these crumbling inner walls uh, to the south, uh, many of which have collapsed over time. No real indication of what they used to be um, because all that's left are just a few broken stones that you know is a wall, but you can't tell what the structures look like. Um, Now, some of the walls are decorated with archways. So you think uh, maybe they led into they were small outbuildings um but really the 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 thing that jumps out at you is on these archways are smaller versions of those elongated heads that you saw on the main entrance um and they're set uh on the archways and on the walls at at regular intervals and the wind that is sort of blowing through the valley uh blows through their open mouths and it it has this like unnerving whistling sound that you hear and you heard it as you were approaching this like you just look at these heads and it's almost like they're whistling at you 
Uh, the ground all uh, within the walls here is uneven. Uh, those same piles of silt that lets you just hop over the wall uh, have created dunes uh, throughout. Everybody give me either a spot hidden or an archaeology, whatever's better. Currently spot hidden for me. Let's see. I got an extreme success with spot hidden. Extreme. Ooh. Extreme. Extreme. Got a regular success. I got a regular success as well. Hey guys, guess what? Carter doesn't see shit. Oh. <laughs> I'm shocked. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's start with the extreme success. You're all going to see it, but the extreme success is going to give Vaughn a, a moment here. Uh, basically, you're, you're walking around and you see there are these like stone slabs covering something throughout the uh, grounds. I can highlight them here on roll 20. You see these stone slabs? Um, mm -hmm. They're just, yes. some of them are right around the perimeter of the pyramid. Um, and then one of them is kind of like right close to you where you are walking in. Um, so I imagine if you're walking around the grounds kind of exploring uh, at a certain point, Carter isn't looking and almost falls into an open one to the north. But with your extreme success, Vaughn, you grab uh, Carter before he falls into this uh, open pit. And you oh. see that it's just like a vertical shaft leading straight into the ground. Oh. Steady there, old boy. Whew. Man, sorry, it's the no depth perception with the one eye. Thank you. Yes, yes I could see how that would uh, provide trouble walking and playing squash. Uh, we should be very careful not to wander off and stick together, yes? Yes, 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 quite so. Perhaps this, um, if there is something underground, something like this, it seems to me, would be a providing ventilation. Um, Carter mm -hmm. takes a little, is there like a pebble around? Carter could just kind of, like, toss it into one of these holes, just listen. You toss into the uh, the open hole, and yeah. it's the same shape as all these ones that are covered by stone slabs. So you think, okay, these must all be some sort of weird chimneys or something. You drop it in, and seconds later, you hear ting, 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 ting. A couple seconds. That's probably don't want to go down there on our own. But it's not too deep if we are built here. I heard here a it's... tink tink for sure. <laughs> there is some security in a tink tink. Some uh, comforting is that I, I get that everything here is permeated in the in the presence and smell of decay, but is it uh maybe less profound? For, what's what, does it feel like? It's intensely wafting up from these uh, shafts. Um. Yeah. If you smell down there, uh, roll a sniff. Roll a sniff. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm uh, rolling. I'm rolling a sniff check. <laughs> Extreme mm -hmm. success on the sniff check. Uh, yeah, right now you're smelling mostly lilacs, but uh, mm -hmm. obviously right. the charnel pit has a, a scent to it, the scent mm -hmm. of death. Uh, the pyramid itself. Uh, there's just five steps leading up to the the top there. Strong smell of death that is permeating the air. But if you smell in there, I mean, it, it, it's you smell decay. It's hard to say if it's worse or better because you imagine the ventilation down there isn't as good. Um, so it's just it's just rotten yeah. all around you. Delicious. And yeah, that's that's the biggest problem is without knowing what the ventilation situation mm -hmm. is down there, uh, it, it's probably probably pretty bad enough so that it could be like uh, someone like Feyruz has already put their handkerchief over their mouth. That might be a smart idea going forward. Yeah, and I'm thinking that Vaughn will maybe imitate let's, that smart let's move. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Put some perfume let's all on imitate. A, a handkerchief and <laughs> um, Jackson does the same. I Perhaps. think that Margot's hears the, the whistling statues and probably walks towards one of those just to like look more at it, like try to understand, like, what does this mean? Why? It's just staring at you. It's this like small, almost Easter Island like head, but a, a miniature version with an open mouth and just no eyes, and it's just staring at you. <laughs> Is there like anything about? Because you, you said there were like more around, and the wind seems to be blowing through them. 
to mm-hmm. make the noise. So if the wind blows harder, do they make more noise if it blows a certain direction? I don't know. Is there like anything here that I can know more about? Is it in like yeah. a specific key? Are they pitched yeah. differently? Is like it a harmonic? Shot chord? Uh, no, I think it's mainly what you can dis- uh, all of you discern is where this is like in a valley. This uh, this whole area because you had to climb up and then come back down. It's super windy, so the wind is just whipping through, and it's as if this whistling is just an added unnerving uh, mm. extra. Um, but with everything else that's gone on and the floating head that you saw but moments ago, it's just it's just another thing that makes this all unsettling. And then you think about these Tiwanaku people who there's there's nothing written about them. They left no written records. Like, what what did this mean? What are they trying they left these heads. What are these who are these heads? What are they protecting? Yeah. What are they she goes, uh, Maybe at one point this was a fun sound for them. But now it's just weird. Mm. Oh, they love this sound so much. Like, ooh, fun whistling. Let's make our town cute. Yeah. It's fascinating architecture, isn't it? I mean, it could have been ceremonial. It could have been pure intimidation. It could have been numerous reasons. Protective. Uh, Yes. Yeah. We should probably get in that body pit. (laughs) Is that that truly your your preferred method of... uh, Entry, Mr. Tillinghast? Wait. All I know is that we saw two real weird looking bloated folk go up to the top of this thing and barf inside of it. Now, I would rather go in a place that they're not going, as far as we can tell. I don't know if anyone's really, you know, pumped to get into a body pit. I get it. I've been there. And who's to say they're not coming back? To exactly. vomit right on top of us. Could be a conveyor belt of pukers <clears throat> happening here. Look at all these bodies. They're doing something At least something we out know here. that what's down there is definitely dead. Yeah. Yes. Very well. So be it. Just don't have a, a great war flashback on us or anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't, don't worry. Don't, don't, don't worry at all. It's still S- Sanity-wise, you seem to be in great shape. <laughs> I have the I've common. seen everything that you see, Miss Dillinghouse. I assure you, I'm of completely sound mind. <laughs> Yeah. All right. And just real quick, just want to double check. This is obviously a formality. Are you going to try to kill any of us again? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> who, are you talking to? who are you talking to? Me or the... Uh... Oh, no, not, not, the, not the meta world of the Keeper, but uh, the, the, the character who did try to kill one of us. Well, I, I started to make like I was gonna. Oh, but, right. Uh, <laughs> That's right, during his mental slip. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and I think, I assure you, just a, just a slip. Uh, we all saw that thing, heard that voice. I, uh, I'm, I'm completely steady now, Mr. Tillinghast. Okay. I assure you. Right. Okay. And the same question, obviously, to Troy. I know uh, that's a no. He's, he's going to keep us alive as long as possible. So let's do this. Right. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm rooting for you guys. <laughs> Get in the body uh, pit. Now, here's the good news. Uh, because of this, this pit so full of bodies, you think that it would actually be pretty easy to climb down um, because you have to just use... Uh, the corpses as like a improvised ladder to get to this hole. Um, (laughs) I don't know why I find that so funny. (laughs) Because it's hilarious. There's not many times you can say that combination of words. (laughs) Requesting get in the body pit as as merch. (laughs) (laughs) The positive spin is the best. The good news about this uh, pile of dead people. I was looking on the bright side. Okay. There is Um, a silver lining to the body pit. (laughs) Okay. Who wants to go in first? I think uh, I think maybe if uh, if 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 Tillinghast was really, are you okay? Um, it's like, and I'll prove to you. Just if you don't want me watching your back, Mister Tillinghast, I'm perfectly willing to go down first. That, right. I'm, I, I assure you all, I'm 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 quite quite of sound mind. You can trust me, and I'll uh, sling my rifle on my back and begin to crawl into the pit. And we still have the torches that we made upon, like, when we thought we were going through the front. Yes, we'll definitely have some of that oil and... Yep. 
improvised uh, torch it is it material. is dark down there so um, you're gonna want a torch but right now you're gonna want your two hands um, luckily the light from above which is fading with every passing moment uh, is providing you enough light to at least see where that hole is so you think if you're able to to maneuver wade through these bodies uh, and get down there then you would uh, if you can find footing light up a torch so Vaughn climbs in and starts you know just moving past all these corpses some that uh, as I mentioned are quite fresh but fresh as in like the last few weeks maybe uh, some maybe months ago and then you start seeing skeletons that could be uh, you know centuries old who knows mm-hmm. and uh, who goes in after Vaughn Beirut definitely is eager to get in there, but as she's climbing down that, that very much desecrating corpse, she's like, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. As she's stepping over like each body on the so way sorry. down. <laughs> yeah, Margot gets in, uh, yeah. curses in German her whole way down. I don't know any German. I should, I should know this. <laughs> I think Shiza. Just yeah. from the internet, because <laughs> they will have somebody send in a German curse word list for uh, Kate, uh, and then it's just Jackson and Carter standing up there, and uh, Jackson's like, uh, "Would you like to do the honor, Mister Tillinghast?" Yeah, I'll go. I think it's better that I not be in the, in the very back um, for my own personal reasons. So uh, yeah, so so Carter starts making his way down. Do any of these bodies are they still like clothed? Like, are there pants? Are they wearing oh, pants? Yeah. yeah, I mean, the ones towards the top, uh, some of them still have clothes yeah. uh, sticking to their emaciated frames. Carter can't help himself. Every once in a while, gives a little pat, pat on some, pat on some dead pockets to see if there's any any, any wallets. <laughs> sort of pick a pocket? <laughs> yeah, any credit cards that don't exist yet? Uh, uh, you know, yeah. anything like that. <laughs> uh, as you go down, you do see that uh, there's like, it looks like it must have been a woman. It's so hard to tell because the face is mm-hmm. just stripped of flesh at this point. Uh, has a uh, diamond ring on her finger. Oh yeah, Carter does a little a little how you, how you do there. Takes it. Yep. Maybe the whole as finger. The f- <laughs> the whole finger comes with it. <laughs> but then the ring's easy to take off. Yeah. Um, as you're all uh, wading through this, each of you have this moment where you're just climbing and not knowing what's around you. And, and at a certain point, all of you just kind of turn and come face to face with just a corpse in a, in a face of just absolute terror but missing most of its skin this whole experience of wading through corpses in that moment uh provokes another sanity roll yeah of course Ooh. Jeez. Right. you're like you're pushing it <laughs> uh, <laughs> my d100 i dropped it oh, i rolled a yeah 12. 18 hell yeah 18 all right so uh did anybody fail yeah oh yeah Okay. <laughs> if you passed, you take one sanity loss. <gasps> if you fail, you take one d4. Oh my. Oh, you take four card. <laughs> I mean, a bunch of bodies versus a floating head. That's, <laughs> that's cool. You're already shook. Holding that's what the it finger. is. <laughs> Yeah. This ex- <laughs> this happened to uh, to Ross because Ross was on edge and then just kept getting pushed and then he turned the gun on mm-hmm. on you folks. Yeah. Now you saw this head and, and it looked like you. It was enough to crack you and then maybe that's what happens again. You're climbing through and you look and there's a face that looks just like you but instead of it looking perfect, it's all stripped of its flesh and it gives you that same little wink and oh. now you lose it. Four sanity points. Okay, yep. Just a little pee comes out. <laughs> I think with, and you're I up top, with, so everyone feels that. Yeah, I got, and I'm wearing like khakis, so it's obvious. <laughs> I think with Faye Ruse, when she sees that face and that open mouth, she hears that weird whistle as though it's coming out of their mouth. Yes. And then just yes. kind of snaps out of it. Uh, uh, yeah, Kate, talk to me. One sanity point loss. What happens? I think Margot came here for some inspiration for art. And she sees these faces, and it's starting to look like, like the coarse, like wood carvings of like the abstract expressionists, and it's just like a little too much. And maybe 
she's maybe starting to not like abstract. Maybe she just wants to paint some pretty flowers or something when she co- when if she makes it out of here. Um, yeah. It's all haystacks from here on out. <laughs> just nothing but hay. <laughs> maybe uh, you just want to paint by numbers. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Vaughn, She's going to uh, be Thomas Kincaid after all this. <laughs> Vaughn, you succeeded, but that still shook you. Uh, mm-hmm. Where are you at? What's your mental space like? He was attempting to draw strength from the, like I said, the eerie familiarity of the presence of death that he experienced at the front. And and as much as it's like, been there, seen it, old boy. Wretches it is. And, um, I think it's probably one of those things where like something happens that probably happened to him in a foxhole where he reaches out to a, to like a, he's groping to keep his balance and tr- lays his hand on a, on a head to, to steady himself and his hand just goes through. Yeah. And it's just like, <gasps> and just the, the, the nauseous tactility of it, like puts him right back in the, on the, in waist deep in mud and hearing explosions. Yeah. This is a great idea. You guys all get down there and I have moved you on the map. Um, If you look uh, to the right, you will find uh, the five of you in a little pit. As you reached that hole and climbed into it, it started sloping downward deeper and deeper underground and you now find yourself below the site we'll find out more right after this word from our sponsor the tunnels here are about 10 feet wide but only like 4 feet high now you see that it it's not uh, uniform, like it's not always 10 feet and it's not always four feet, but right ahead of you, uh, leading to, uh, let's call it for map purposes, to the west is a tunnel that is only about four feet high that goes for about, oh, 10, 20 feet or so, and then turns to the north. And so it looks like the only way to get through there to move forward the only uh, way that you see uh, is through that tunnel and the easiest way to move would be on all fours okay who wants to go first I think I mean if I was first in the marching order I, if I can using the oil and materials that we scrounged light up a torch yeah light up a torch and just be like crawling. and begin to scoot down and of course at this point I want to see if there's any hieroglyphic gold or anything on the walls or any any uh, markings um, of course um, who is uh, just tell me the marching order while I uh, look something up real quick so who's going to crawl in after uh, Vaughn uh, I, I will, we're, if we're keeping the same. Yeah, let's just keep, keep the, the same, same order. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so you look up and you do see that there is uh, this sort of gold filament along the walls that matches exactly what you have in your possession that Jackson took from the university. And it is unbroken, though, and it just continues forward into the darkness uh, to the extent of the light of your torch. And the walls underneath the gold filament are made uh, of those same stone slabs that you saw above that were covering the holes leading uh, presumably down to these tunnels as well. I'll indicate that to the, the group. Um, Keep our eyes peeled for any any chunk that could be missing. Mm-hmm. Right. You start crawling and, and feel free to, to move yourselves on the map if you if you want. If you can't control your characters, let me know. I can uh, figure it out. But uh, assuming you begin just crawling through, um, 
you find that the the ground is a little uneven. Uh, there's a lot of rock and debris. Um, so everybody give me a dex roll just to make sure that you're able to uh, move without cutting your hands. Oh, I just realized that the tunnel was off to the side there. I was like, where is it? Where are we? <laughs> yeah, it's a new map to the right if you haven't noticed. Uh, I slid it over waiting. there, but there's only a tiny bit of it revealed. I'm waiting to move right, we're doing my Dex. place in line. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Dex roll to see if you uh, are able to push along without cutting your hands. Woo, 36 under 55. Boom. Gosh. 35 under 80. I, I got an extreme success. I'm really rolling nice. hot. Oh, you heal a wound. Uh, I failed. <laughs> you failed. All right. Uh, you take two points of hit point damage. You cut your hand open on like a, uh, it almost feels like glass down there. And oh. you start, you were like, ah, you can feel that warm blood uh, pooling in the palm of your right hand. Guys, there's something wet down here. Oh, no, that's me. I've cut myself. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are uh the smell is overpowering but luckily with the um the handkerchief and the lilac under the nose uh you don't have to uh, uh roll a con check to see if you become nauseated Ooh. um so you can thank Feruz for that so you continue going uh up the tunnel and you see about 50 feet up a uh shaft that moves at an angle and then uh, goes up. And you think like, okay, wait a minute. Where we were, where the charnel pit was, outside was another one of those stone blocks. So that must be one of the chimneys that leads up. There's no light coming down because that chimney had a cover on it. Um, the one that Carter almost fell into is to the north. Um, so as long as there's light, um, hopefully uh, some of that light will spill in, even though you have a torch. Um, and in fact, if you look further up ahead, you do see a little shaft of light. Um, and so it all makes sense. Uh, but nothing else is really jumping out to you. So do you guys continue forward? Yeah, Carter's sort of yeah. mumbling out loud and be like, I just don't, why would they make hallways so tiny? Like, is everyone super short, or what is this? What is the point of this shaft? Yeah, it, it does seem strange. Like, was it made this way, or did something happen to make it um, so uncomfortable? So all certain... the, so obviously the, the, the walls have the, the gold inlay on uh -huh. them, but, but the tunnels themselves are, like, are they carved in a way where there's, like, you know, we're talking right angles here, or is it just, like, a cave? Is it, like, a natural kind of tunnel? Uh, no, it's it's it, it looks like it was man-made, okay. um, but uh, it also looks like something happened uh, that makes makes everything a little uneven, all this debris on the floor. So maybe it's the passage of time, or maybe there was some cataclysmic event that changed this, because, yeah, were people, maybe the Tiwanakus were only four feet tall, and this was perfect for them. Um, you wouldn't rule that out. Uh, and there are certain points as you're walking through that you actually could stand up for a second, take a breath, stretch your legs, and then you got to get back on all fours and keep moving. Uh, and sure enough, as you continue to the north, um, a couple things happen. One, uh, you reach a wall um, and you see a shaft of light coming down. And so now you know where you are uh, on the larger map. You're right underneath where that open space was that Carter almost fell into. So the pyramid, the greater part of the pyramid must be to your left, to the west. However, when you reach that wall at the end, um, the path splits in two and goes to the east and to the west. Mm-hmm. What well, do you do? We know that if this was where you almost fell, mm -hmm. and there's two directions here, that must mean that if we go in that direction, to our left, that will lead us to the vomit pit somewhere. Mm -hmm. To the right. What was to the right? Not could so just sure. Be, yeah, it could be a dead end. I mean, yeah. that'd be. be good. Might be good to go right. Cool. And exit. Kind of clear that, and then... You want to go right first, just to make sure we're not... Yes. If we... Okay. 
If the, if the conquistadors were the ones who pried that gold bit off the wall, then perhaps they didn't make it very far into the uh, into the tunnels. It could very well be that it came from one of the outer limits. I'm sure that's the case. That should just get us out of here and lickety split. <laughs> well, we can't rule anything out. Right. Yes, let's go. Yes. Let's go right. Let's go right, and then and then double back. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. So Vaughn, you're in the lead. You go right, and and all of you are watching. Just none of that gold is broken. It's all unbroken all the way. And man, if you could ever pry all of that off, you would be rich beyond your wildest dreams. But now you know the risks. You take a right and you go maybe 15 feet or so, and the tunnel opens up into a small stone-lined chamber, about 20 feet by 20 feet, and the ceiling is a little higher so that you could stand up. You see ahead of you with your torch, filthy reed mats lying on the floor, and the rest of the room is piled high with a, a miscellaneous collection of coins, jewelry, you see watches in the light, uh, ancient artifacts um, that look like they're from all different time periods, and you're out in the hallway just looking in. Um, But you also see two people. A man and a woman. (gasps) It was the same people from the outside. Not a man and a woman. <laughs> a man and a woman. <laughs> it's all connected, man. It's like motionless as corpses lying on the reed mats. And you're in the tunnel ahead of everybody by yourself. Oh my Looking god. In. I'll reveal it on the map. Oh god. It's so weird. Mm. Yes, yes. Scoot over right. there. Over there. <clears throat> and as soon as I see them, I maybe turn back to Beirut with the, like, and the signal that the two we saw are in the, are in this room. And I do the same thing that Nora did, only silently. <laughs> 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 Some, and there's a there's a very comical pantomime in the dark. Here. <laughs> um, I mean, are, are they asleep? What's? Are their eyes closed? What should, you see? Should we kill them? Yes. I, I just sort of lift my pistol up and just shrug. <laughs> Got some of that oil, and and if there's any more of that oil, um, yes, yes, see, yes, like. They're sleeping, I say, let's give them a more permanent rest than they're already experiencing. It's the humane thing to do, light somebody on fire while they're asleep. I think that's the best way to go about this. <gasps> those dusty mat, those mats are old. Do they look dry or are they kind of damp? They look very dry. Ha ha. Yes. Light them up. Are they, wait, hold on, I should ask this. Are they like distended? Do they, are they strange looking? Are these just two campers? Um. Obviously, you, you you haven't been close up to these people before, but you have every reason to believe they were the two people you saw with go- huge bellies walking ahead of you down below in the valley floor where it made no sense to travel. And they're the two people that then vomited into the top of the pyramid and then moved down out of sight. They must have gone into the corpse pit as well and then came in here to sleep, their stomachs completely flat now. Okay, yeah, let's, we should light them up. So talk to me about who does what here. <laughs> um, I think it just I, automatically happens. I don't see what well, the... <laughs> okay, what if we, we need to get them onto the mats? They're on the mats, they're lying. They're sleeping. On, they're on the mats, yeah, they're sleeping they on the mats. They look like corpses, the way they're laying. So like splash okay. them and then light them. Maybe we yeah. don't need oil. If it's that dry, because that's yeah, a second take, step. I don't take chances, though. Yeah. We also run the risk of, uh, you know, usually, I would imagine, when you light somebody on fire, it's not a quiet, it's not a quiet way to go. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a little noisy in here. Well, then, if there's always a, 
uh, our edged weapons. Uh, Those aren't quiet either, unless we sneak up and try to cut their heads off or something. Which doesn't ma- doesn't do anything to them, right? We've learned that you can't. Decapitating them does nothing. But that could be a first step, and then immediately light them on fire. Yes, mm-hmm. this is more of a both hand than more of an either. <laughs> Guys are stone cold killers. Or what about this? <laughs> Only because it's things, man. <laughs> <laughs> Only because this could be super metal. What if we doused our blades in oil, light them <gasps> on fire, and then fucking <laughs> yeah. yes? Um, yeah, I Troy, love can, that. Now that, we've, now that we've come down the corpse pit, can we uh, <laughs> can we totally decapitatify them with flaming machetes? <laughs> <laughs> it's becoming like we burned it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I really think uh, we've settled on the decision here. <laughs> it's flaming machetes. Uh, yeah. Sweet. All right. So who's uh, Kate and excuse me, uh, Margot and Carter have the blades. So uh, Ross, excuse me, I'm, do my characters Vaughn and Feyre's like helping them uh, get them lit, and then yeah. you guys just <laughs> with flaming That's, machetes. Yes. One, two, three, and you just come down on their necks and their heads get pulled from their body. But you see their eyes open up and their bodies are like flailing and the heads are like screaming, ah, 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 and their mouths go from like normal looking human mouths to these awful looking leech mouths with the teeth all around the ring and they're screaming wildly, screaming, ah, ah, it's horrifying. But eventually they burn to a crisp. Yes. And they're gone. Whew. Nice. No Not sanity roll. I was going to have you roll a sanity roll, but you've actually <laughs> seen this yeah. recently. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I, you know, the, you're, you're well, a little that. bit desensitized to uh, burnt alive, uh, decapitated curry series. Um, but luckily, uh, whatever process they went through, this ritual of vomiting into the crack and then coming down here to rest, they left themselves vulnerable to four murderous investigators <laughs> with flaming machetes. Any metal band that wants to use the title Decapitated with Flaming Blades in the Necro Pit. Um, <laughs> oh, free, trademarked by that. now. Yeah. Don't do it. I hope of the thousands upon thousands of people that have played this game. Uh, no one else has used a flaming <laughs> machete in this scene. We use flaming machetes. <laughs> now that we're in the room, is there anything else of note in there? It's all this treasure. Do it. They spot are treasure. For the some, love you don't even need that. to spot hit and there's so much shit in here. I mean, there is there is riches beyond uh, oh beyond all comprehension here. It's really just a matter of what you could actually take out uh, if you wanted to. And Jackson is is wide-eyed looking at everything. He's like this, look at this. This could make us, I mean, this could make us rich beyond our wildest dreams, but we can't, we can't take, we can't take all of it. We could certainly take some. We are here to put things back. What if it makes another rip in the sky? Taking anything from here, it's not safe. Sure, sure, but hear me out. Um, What if uh, it's the opposite and we take things and it only makes life better for us if we live? Has it been better since they took this gold slab? No, but this is part of of the walls. You know what I mean? That's a separate thing. Look at this, this is a cup. What's over here? We got a couple uh, goblets, you know? Carter wants to grab whatever's the least jingly <laughs> and put him in his pockets. Okay, but I'm going to periodically be staring at your chest, and if I see one <laughs> weird whole thing happen, <laughs> machete. Flaming goblet, machete. Flaming machete. Yeah, flaming machete. I, I'll own it. Uh, it's just uh, a pile, right? It doesn't look like it's on a... It's not like a Indiana Jones where it's like on a special pedestal and it's... <laughs> yeah, like the you take the one that's under a, a perfectly lit <laughs> yeah. pedestal. I'll just take this one. Um, yeah, this one seems nice. <laughs> Look yeah. at the spotlit gem. There is, uh, there is a lot of stuff here, and uh, the artifacts range from contemporary to very old, like pre-Incan. Um, this is, this is plunder. You see, all these yeah. people that they've been giving the suck to. This is, they've been, they've been filling their little treasure house with all their, all their loot. And if this place has been here for centuries, then no wonder we have Inca. Gold rubbing shoulders with uh, 
ancient Tiwanaku chalices. Yes, How did this. all of this treasure get here together if it's not all from the same time period? Is someone else hoarding it? Perhaps this, is, this has been know. here throughout this time while these leech people have been hunting. Adding to the hoard, yes. And that's why I don't feel bad taking some of it. I'm not going to take all of it, but uh, these families that, that lost their loved ones, the, the bodies of those people in the pit, we, we don't know who they are. We could perhaps do some good with this. We owe it to them to take their shit. Right. It's. I will plunder, but only something modern. Plunder? Why don't you plunder for science? Think about it that way. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Um, It's up to you. You definitely don't have to plunder. uh, But Jackson is like, I I, I agree with Mr. Tillinghast, and and he grabs uh, as much as he can carry and and, and fills his pockets. He's like, I I, I do not think we should touch the the gold lining on the wall, but there's no reason not to to take a little bit here. um, Yeah. Vaughn wants to take something that's like purely aesthetic, like something little, like a little statue or something, something beautiful. There is a uh, a little statuette um, that catches your eye. That is, uh, it looks like a uh, a rotund human mm. with the head of a monkey. Mm. Yes. I think. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, go ahead. I was gonna say I think that maybe Margot thought she was holier than thou, like, oh, I can't believe you guys are doing this, and then <laughs> as you're doing that, looks around, maybe sees a couple of things, like, oh, but that's a so pretty, oh my goodness, <laughs> and she maybe takes a couple of things. You see uh, Feyru's very prim and proper, just straightens herself up, smooths her hair, takes a look around, and goes, right, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> and you grab some stuff. Um, so in game terms, uh, if you did plunder, all of you take um, stuff that could be sold for up to 2,000 American dollars. Oh, that's a lot of clams. In 1921, that is a lot of clams. Uh, you think there's probably over $200,000 worth of stuff here, but it's just impossible for you to take more than what you took. Um, so this may uh, may uh, give you some uh, extra means. Uh, if and when you return to your homes. Is it like, nice. is the game like real life uh, where you can spend money to gain sanity? <laughs> <laughs> you know if only. I mean, I'm currently writing plunder <laughs> worth $2,000. <000. laughs> $2,000 worth of plunder. Oh, um, crazy. <laughs> Jackson takes some as well. Wonderful and, little monkey man. Yes, I'll, I'll have that one. You might just want to keep it and uh, not take the two thousand. Put it on your desk. I think as a nice yeah. memory of your time and <laughs> yeah. just all the good memories. <laughs> right. Uh, Vaughn Va- is Vaughn is a Vaughn is a, a fellow of means, so I think it is more like a hmm, something for the collection. Jackson is Go standing nice on the coffee table. Mm, yes. Jackson is standing at the uh, edge of the chamber, looking back down the tunnel, and looks back at all of you, and it's like. Well, it appears the only way to go is that way. Well. It appears so. Well, to our deaths. <laughs> Let's make it quick. Um, I the will spirit. be happy knowing it's... that I have died $2,000 richer. <laughs> yeah, let's make sure we get out of here so we can spend this. <laughs> to our deaths. Yeah. Uh, all the more reason to return safely. You start heading uh, in that direction, I'm assuming the same party order, and uh, luckily the ceiling seems to be uh, a little bit higher in this. Uh, So you start out on all fours again, crawling back into the tunnel, but then it starts to lift up a ways. And you continue along about, uh, I don't know, 15 feet or so, and you see a turn so it basically continues going to the west, but then it also turns to the south. <laughs> and your uh, your torches uh, show you that about uh, 50 feet or so to the south, the wall ends and then it turns again, also heading west. Um, and then west just continues on. Hmm. Um, can I roll luck 
to see if I have a big chunk of chalk in my inventory. Uh, yeah, sure. I don't know if that... I, okay, I rolled under my luck. Um, uh, I rolled a 28, which is under, like, 60, I believe. You reach into your uh, breast pocket and you uh, pull out a, a piece of chalk. And I mark a big arrow at this crossroads on the wall to show which direction we came from. Who would disturb my chamber? Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, little arrow. And I immediately the wall. turn to dust. <laughs> <laughs> which way would you like to head? Do you want to continue forward the path you were on or take this turn? Is there like a navigate we can do? Because like we're, we're trying to go to where, where under the pyramid is, go? right? Um. Unfortunately, if we're if we're trying to like just find the spot where the gold is missing, it could be anywhere yeah. along the walls. Yeah. I would say so. we work, start work our way from out to in. So I would seems... say we keep going along the the the, the, the edge here. Okay. Do any of you uh, have a, a, a points in navigate? I think navigate is a skill, isn't it? I, I have don't have enough, but I do have a compass. Ah, that's good. All right. Uh, would I don't you know say Margot twenty five? Mm-hmm. Anybody else have navigate? I don't think mine's higher just than that. 10. I think mine's yeah. lower. Yeah, got a ten to navigate. That's just the hell of it. Give me a, a roll there, Kate. And navigate. Twenty one under twenty five. You guys. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, amazing. All right, so. That is this enough. This is why she's an artist. Spatial <laughs> awareness. Mm-hmm. And rotate. Oh, yeah, that's true. All right, this is enough for you to know that uh, you are right at this crossroads. Directly above you is where the pyramid would be. So you think that perhaps the tunnels, if they follow the shape of the pyramid, uh, this is the outline of the the northeast edge of the pyramid here. So it will continue for a while uh, along this way, and then it'll probably take the shape of the, uh, the southwest portion. So if you slide over and look at the pyramid on the other side of the map, you think that uh, you're under it right now. All right. I tell everyone my theory and I hope everyone trusts me as an expert of knowing navigation, even though I'm an artist. A navigation like, hey guys, and archaeology expert. Just like the pyramid outline could be that. So I bet this this way goes away for a long time. But if we turn, it'll go in a zigzag pattern. I'm not sure which way would be best, but maybe we should split up because it'll meet back. At I some don't point. think we should split up. <laughs> no? I was, no, with, I was with you for a while there, Sour, and then um, yeah. <laughs> I was even willing to believe that artists know where they're going. But at I, this I'm, point, I'm sure you'd love to be all by yourself as an artist. You have r- rugged individuals striking out in the, on your journey to tame the sublime with your paintbrush and all that. But uh, I'd pr- prefer if we all uh, stayed as one unit. I feel like Margot, like even though she's rolling well with all these um, sanity rolls, she's just been like so tense, like, oh my God, I'm about to die at any moment for so long that she's like, fuck it. Let's <laughs> just find this metal, this gold piece that's missing and we can do it faster if we split up. And yeah. Right. We, we could also die faster. Yeah, uh, maybe that so too. I- and then I'd have the sweet relief of death after seeing all of that. <laughs> She's getting anyway, into play dark Call of German Cthulhu mode. by Chaosium. <laughs> <laughs> when dark your characters German crave mode. the sweet release of it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, so chances are that if we run into anybody else like we just did back there, we'd have a higher chance of getting out alive if we're together. Just so. But you, 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 your, your theory does provide some hope that if we are to follow either of these paths, if it is the outline of the pyramid, then we should circle around and arrive back at this point. Let's do it. Let's keep going along. Right. Straight. Yes. Very well. Onward. All right, you keep pushing ahead and you go for another 20 feet or so and Vaughn, you're up front. Mm -hmm. You see the first 
thing that looks different in these tunnels than you've seen so far besides the dirt and the debris. You see a pile of rags about 30 feet away from you as you're uh, walking along here. Now, sailing gets a little low, but you haven't had to get back on all fours. You're kind of moving along, and you see a pile of rags. Oh, it's blood. There's a pile of rags over there. Um, uh, <laughs> Dry or wet? There's a question. Um, I will... It's just a pile of rags? Um, no yeah, human just, being would stack rags like this. Yes. <laughs> you haven't seen anything else lying around, so it does mm-hmm. jump out at you. Everything else has just been debris, maybe the glass that uh, Carter cut himself on, but this is the first time we're like, well, that's okay. all. Okay, I want to inspect them. Um, should I roll a, like a spot hidden? Or you can roll a spot a... hidden, you can move closer, it's up to you. I'll roll a, I'll, I'll uh, extend my torch into the darkness and roll that sweet, sweet spot hidden. Okay. Oh, and uh, wait, no, I just, I just cleared it. 72 on a 75. Okay, uh, so you you push the torch ahead into the uh, barely illuminated tunnel ahead of you, and you see that it isn't a, a pile of rags. In fact, it looks like a, a body that's wrapped in decayed wool and cotton. And with your successful spot hidden check, you see something like white and glistening just dart past the eye socket of the body. Something worm-like? Just Just be ready with that fire again. Some sort of mummy. Um, and I mean, Vaughn might want to just, like, light this thing up. Yeah. So, Sh- uh, Vaughn will continue to extend the torch toward those desiccated wrappings and light it, light it on fire. You start to move towards it with your torch, and right as you get up to it to douse it, the corpse starts to stand up and animate. Hmm. Everybody give me a sanity roll. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. No. You don't want to fail this one. There's so many. No. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. 37. We had a a couple episodes. Wasn't a lot of sanity checks. Now you're in it. I rolled an 84, and I have an 84. Wait, you have an 84 sanity, and you rolled rolled an 84? 84. A really high sin. What does that God. mean? Did I? You made it. If if you hit it or under. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meets it, beats it. That almost uh, got me. That almost got me. Ross. Would it be great if I had an eighty-four? Unfortunately, I just have a twenty-seven, oh, and I no. rolled a thirty-two. Oh come oh. on! I didn't know you it was can't so spend low. luck on sanity, huh? No. no. I'm, oh, gross. Kate, I'm hanging. Oh my God. Been going why are you insane since the bar. Because I have something to prove, that's <laughs> why. <laughs> oh, God. Rob, I saw a look of disgust. Yeah, it was not, uh, that's not the look I make when I'm happy. Um, I failed. Well, the good news is it's, uh, I have to, I, I'm just going to check the book again because this seems brutal. So this is why, by the way, that I hate apples to apples, the game. <laughs> because I feel like in my Ooh. mind, there's a very set, like, life works in a very particular way. And a floating <laughs> head that evaporates into flies, for some reason, it seems more intense to me than your standard mummy. <laughs> uh, Just your, your standard mummy. It's uh, zero points if you passed, one D8 if you failed. Oh my God. I, As yeah, this yeah, thing I... came to life. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ross, I'm gonna give you yours first. Four points of sanity damage. Okay. All right. Five. Okay. Now remember, five or more, uh, you have to roll an intelligence check to see if you fully understand uh, the was brunt four. of this. That was four total. Five in one swoop is what you don't want. Yep. Six for Carter. Yep, I saw it on your fucking uh, face. No. <laughs> okay. Also, also, Troy, <laughs> if, I, if I lose one-fifth of my sanity over the course of a day, 
I go indefinitely insane according to the rules. My Inde- 27 uh, sanity points, that means my fifth value is five. And I have, with that four, now lost <laughs> five sanity on this deck. A couple of things are going to happen. Uh, first... Wow, okay. Uh, Rob, I need an intelligence check, and this is a roll that you want to fail. If you fail this roll, you don't fully understand what's happening. You don't fully understand why this pile of rags just came to life and is lurching towards uh, Vaughn's torch. If you pass it, you are smart enough to understand the true horror, and you will go uh, temporarily insane. Okay, so I want to roll... You'll have a bout of madness, I should say. Right, right. So I want to roll... Higher than my intelligence. Yeah, you want to fail this. The good Not thing that's the... an eighty. Oh no! Oh, so... <laughs> <sighs> All right, so so hold on, hold on. Sorry, let me back up. Let me let me. I I took, I just took five sanity. Mm-hmm. Or six. Oh, six. Yeah, you took six damage, but if you take five in one swoop, this is when you have to. Okay, so let me just reduce that from the total sanity right now. Yeah. Now I'm current. rolling to see the intelligence situation. And I rolled an 88! Get out oh, of here! Nice. Carter doesn't know nice. what the fuck is going on. <laughs> okay, all right, so you're not uh, temporarily insane. Oh, However, well. poor oh, Vaughn, well. I mean, oh. we knew this was gonna happen, uh, has gone indefinitely insane. Uh, <gasps> let's <laughs> let's get into Man. this. I, I have to, I mean, I should have looked this up beforehand. I have to look up the rules for indefinitely insane, but I think you basically, until you rest, you become, uh, I think you're just like out. Wait, um, until I, I become insane until finding a place of safety and resting. There should be a place of safety in this uh, creepy underground uh, cult necropolis, right? Go to, the, yeah. go to the pit full of dead bodies. I, the way I think this is going to play out until I dig deeper into the rules here is that you go uh, to uh, light this thing uh, with a torch and you're just, it's finally the last straw as you see this thing come to life and you see something swirling around in the oh skull that now faces you and you just go fetal, at least for this combat. Okay, okay. Great. Is there a, is there a, gonna be a, like a Wicked Nick- Empire where we see like Ross has three characters <laughs> rolled up? I am the Dianist player in, in, all, in, this, in this network. I, I also think it's hilarious how matter of fact Michael was in our chat. It was just so cold to be like, <laughs> Ross has lost a fifth of his current sanity in a day. He should have def- indefinite, indefinite sanity. sanity. Like, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, Michael. No sugar coating. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, this is uh, all right. Well, it, the, the good thing is, like, you're not taken out of the game. That's zero sanity. Right. Uh, but you're at least taken out of this combat, which could be worse because this thing might start attacking you, and you're just you're quivering. I am the first thing. I'm I'm I'm, I'm in the front of the pack. So, fetal, you say? Okay. So yeah, yeah the, you see the you see the torch move towards this pile of rags, and then it lurch up and fall, like <gasps> reel back, and then the torch just plunk, falls on the ground as uh, you see him just kind of like huddle um, underlit by the flames in this um, against the wall and just m- muttering like it's impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> you can't be you can't still be alive I saw you die so you cannot possibly be living it doesn't work like that it's not a cycle once it's yet you're dead forever it's all wrong it's all wrong <laughs> you know it's all wrong um, and so that's happening are so you, you all right <laughs> <laughs> um, everything's all right. Of course I'm all right. Don't you see? Because if you die, you just come back. It's not. There's, there's, there's no consequence. There's no consequence at all. Um, and is this thing still? Is it? Is it rising up and moving towards everyone? Yeah, it's lurching towards you now. Obviously, your pawns take up the whole width of this hallway on the map, but it is a ten-foot wide hallway. So the good news is you can move past Vaughn to try and attack this thing, and you are in combat rounds. Uh, and Margo, you have the highest dex. What do you do as this thing is like lurching towards? Soundless. It doesn't make that sound. That was my flavor oh, sound. It's guys. just like. <laughs> Um, oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> Sorry about your friend. Uh, I did have my firearm drawn from before. Just uh... Torch in one hand, firearm in the other? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, then in that case, you will go first. Margo, you'll have a chance to think. Um, I'm going to 
kind of shield put myself in between um, this thing and uh, Vaughn. Like a hero. And, and gonna f- fire at it. It should be pretty close. W- was this, did this count as point blank? Point blank range, yes. We uh, we talked about this, uh, one of the rules things uh, that Michael sent along today. Point blank range, uh, if you're close enough, uh, which you are, you get a bonus die. Um, so you roll twice on the uh, hundreds die. I kept saying the tens in earlier episodes and take the better. Okay. Which so would be the lower. with handgun. So glad I got... All right, there we go. <laughs> that first one was not so good. Um, I am going to... I rolled 52 over 50, but I'm going to spend some luck points. Okay, and you uh, failed the other one as well? shot. Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. 52 over 50, so you spend two points to make that shot. Uh, it doesn't attempt to dodge. It yeah. doesn't die for cover. It is just coming at you like most of these enemies that you've fought so far. Uh, so go ahead and roll your damage. Okay. Okay. That's four points. Four points of damage. Now, can I empty all three? Uh, You have to declare that beforehand, and you take a penalty die um, for each shot that you do. I didn't declare it, so let's not. The only reason is because you already took the shot, but like if on your next round you wanted to empty it, you have two bullets left in the chamber, you can roll twice and take the worst result. You take a penalty die. Um, But you also, with point blank, get a bonus die, so they would just cancel each other out, and you would just make two rolls. Make sense? Yeah penalty die for uh, unloading your cartridge, bonus die, because point blank range, those car- uh, okay. would cancel each other out. So, Margo, uh, you see uh, Feyruz step up in front of Vaughn and fire a shot, and just one of the limbs of this mummy basically just flies back, and it keeps moving forward. What do you do, Margo? Well, I was going to pick up the torch that was dropped and try to light it on fire, but if Feruz is shooting at it and trying to shoot point blank, I don't want to get into this tight, seemingly tight area now. Hmm. Um, Remember, it's 10 feet wide. Don't think too much about the map if you want to squeeze by. It's just... uh, I would like to do that, but also still allow Feruz to be point blank if she still is, so that she can continue the next. Yeah, she's not gonna, you, you can't move her, so all you yeah. would do is like slide in beside her. Yeah, okay. Um, and and you I've have got the a torch to too, so. so you could like use that to light yours. Okay, so I wanna, well, I wanna, well, or I guess if we all have torches in our hand, and there's I'll one, just there's use one mine. on the ground too. Yeah, the one I, I was gonna yeah. pick up yours, but yeah, I'll yeah, pick you up could, yours. You could pick no. up uh, Vaughn's if you want and swing up. I think I wanna have one hand with the machete. So I'm just gonna continue with mine and okay. try to light it and see if that helps because fire seems to be killing everything really well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a uh, brawl roll as you try to, you slide in there, grab Vaughn's torch and just kind of ah, flail at this thing. Where is my brawl again? Fighting, okay, okay, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 53 over 30. Um, do I want to spend like 20, 23. 23 luck right now? Um, do you think? Because like there could be a baddie, and then I mm-hmm. might need 52 luck for huh? something. <laughs> it's um, true. Listen I to your think, heart. I think Listen I'm going to. Gonna, heart. I hope no one dies. I'm not going to take the luck for this one. It's too much for it's like. A lot all of the way we still have to go. Yeah, yeah. I respect your choice. Yep. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I mean, look how much black there is around this map right now. You don't <laughs> want to spend all that. And look uh, at how much black we're wearing. I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the one that said it. You said it, Kate. Prophesizing. <laughs> Did I make the choice to kill someone by not spending <laughs> luck? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Only time will tell. Oh, God. Uh, Carter, you are up. Um, this thing is very slow moving, so you get the chance to act. Um, part of me is wondering if I should try to get that gold piece and hold it on it or something. Mm. Uh, Jackson's ha- standing right there behind you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try it. So so Carter's like, 
Jackson, give me that gold thing. All right, be careful, Mr. Tillyass. Just hit him with I it. I always am. <laughs> <laughs> Hands uh, it to you. Carter so I like run up to it and try to like hit it with the with the gold. Thing. Are you trying also, to yeah. hit it to do damage, or you're just trying to place it on it? Uh, ideally, I'm hitting it. I'm, I'm forcefully, forcefully touching it. Okay. Yeah. Give me a brawl. It was, it was singeing skin, right, from before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Carter's like, I don't understand what you are, <laughs> but I don't like you. <laughs> uh, that is that is the most Lovecraftian statement. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled uh, a seventeen under seventy. Seventeen under seventy is at least a hard, if not an extreme, success. Uh, I don't think it's it is extreme. not extreme, just hard. Yeah. Uh, all right, so you hit this thing. You hit it uh, like square in uh, its its left arm, and where its left arm meets its chest. And it does not scream out in pain, obviously. It hasn't made any sounds. You don't notice that it did anything extra, but give me a d6 worth of damage. All right. Three. Three. Okay. And then, do I add anything for my whatever? Your damage bonus. Damage bonus. Your db. I think is a a one. Uh, Might be higher. Plus db. Where is that sweet, sweet DB? Should be in combat. Oh, now. oh damage bonus I keep is one D4. forgetting to add that. <laughs> I don't know if you add that for bullets. I think it's oh, okay. just for brawling, right? Gotcha. It's not like you that makes push sense. the bullet at them. Um, it's yeah, a, I think it's, it's just a one D4, and I rolled a two, so it's five total. Five total. Okay. All right. So you come up and you lay into it uh, with this thing. It doesn't seem to have the effect that you wanted. Uh, you do do damage to it, but not unlike uh, the bullet from Feyruz, it doesn't seem to be phased by these attacks. And now it goes. Yep. And it oh no. is going to reach out for one of the three of you. I'm gonna roll a d6 to determine. One, two, Margo. Three, four, Feyruz. Five, six, Carter. Feyruz, Feyruz, you shot it, and it just reaches out to try and grab you. Now, what is your build? Do you have a build of one or a build of zero? I have a build of one, I right. believe. I believe so too. I think Kate uh, Margot's is the only one with a yes, build of I do zero. Yes, I have a build of one. This has a build of zero, so in order to grab you, it's actually gonna take a penalty die where you have a build of one. Um, I almost wish I rolled Margo. I wouldn't have to do this, but it's gonna try. It like reaches out with its arms and tries to grab you. Uh, God, that would have been a 20 and an, wait a minute. No, I rolled a two, which would have been a critical and an 80. Oh, Oh, wow. Wait, is that right? Uh, did I roll the wrong don't you have dice? to take the do you have to take the smaller oh, one? You know what? I rolled the wrong uh, I rolled the wrong die. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. All right, so it's either an but either way, it, the I would have failed with an eighty two. So uh, let's see, just for shits and giggles, what the other roll would have been. Yeah, so basically a twenty two and an eighty two, I failed. So it goes to grab you, Feyruz, and it misses. Back to the top of the next round, poor Vaughn still uh, shaking and muttering to himself. Feyruz, uh, it is right next to you and you have your gun out. And what, what is, is Jackson just chilling? Jackson's in the back, he gave you the uh, the uh, the gold uh, piece and then he's fumbling, he's fumbling around for his gun. Okay. All right, so it's back up to me now? Yeah, back up to you. Okay, I'm gonna shoot him point blank again. Okay, do you want to unload your cartridge? Yes. Okay, so now you just rolled, uh, it's just two regular rolls, um, no bonuses or penalties. Okay, so for the first one, woo, 36 under 55. Okay, and then the second one? That, ooh, no, that is a 90. <laughs> A 90. Over 55. So okay. one of them makes it. One of them makes it. All right, so give me that damage. And that is four again, four points of 
damage. All right, so the point blank range, you hit uh, its arm and the arm again just flies back. Doesn't seem to be damaging it. Two shots now to its arm. Doesn't seem to be damaging. Uh, Carter goes up, hits its other arm where it meets the chest. It doesn't seem phased by it. It is just moving forward. We need, we need fire. We need Margo, fire. Margo, <laughs> what do you do, Margo? Okay, I just so sorry. I just so slipped, and I'm gonna try to do the fire again because we haven't tried that yet. Okay. S- so brawl. Oh come on, come on, please. <clears throat> No, definitely not. 95. Margus just waving this torch around. <laughs> just wildly uh-huh. can't get close enough to it. My it does depth not... perception is like off or something. Like I think I'm close mm-hmm. enough and I'm not. It's dark in there. All right, now. Oh, you, uh, I gotta say that when those gunshots went off, you just hear this wail come from Vaughn like a child. Just like, no. It's like, you're already. And it's like, you're already dead, don't you? Don't you understand? We're all already dead, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But come back. We can always come back. <laughs> Jackson is going to step up and he's yeah. going to take a shot. About damn time. <laughs> Jackson's got his gun. He was fumbling for it uh, the first round. He is going to take a shot at this creature. A five under uh, whatever his score is here. I mean, I rolled a five. Uh, so that is a hit. And that is going to be Six points of damage, perfect. This is what happens. So he fires at the same arm uh, that Feyruz fires at, and the arm detaches from its body and goes flying down the hallway. And it still seems unaffected. And Jackson says, to say it's it's, it's immune, it's immune to the, the damage to its body. We've got to find where it's sensitive and attack it. Is there a part of it that's blinking every once in a while? <laughs> <laughs> boop, 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 boop. It's Carter's turn. All right, Carter's gonna try to use his machete and cut its head off. Going straight for the head. Okay, yep. uh, give me a uh, brawl. Yes, that seems to be the best move. Um, I rolled a nine under 70. Whoa. Okay, that is an extreme success. Doesn't matter, didn't try to dodge or fight back. Uh, So you hit it. Give me your damage. Oh, bear with me, sorry guys. The machete is a a 1d8 plus my damage bonus. Plus 1d4. So, I can sound of that. Oh God. (laughs) <laughs> uh, oh god oh god nine nine points yeah. of damage yeah all right so you slash at its neck right where it meets the head and you hit it and you notice that this thing has finally uh uh it has finally taken damage i should say it looks like it's finally reacting to the damage so whatever you did to its head is enough to have hurt it but now we move into a new round and it's Feyruz's turn Uh, Okay, Uh, I don't want to waste time a turn reloading. Uh, So can I drop the gun and either take out my knife or take out the lamp oil? Uh, Yeah, either one. Um, Reloading would take a whole round. So if you want to try and attack this round, you can drop the gun and just pull out a new weapon and swing it. All right, we need to get some fire going though. Can I I take the lamp oil? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, you want to take this turn just to douse it? Will that take a full turn? Yeah. Uh, let's no, let's go with a knife. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I have a, um, me- it just says medium knife. So let me roll for, um. Medium knife is probably not 1d8 damage. I think it's, the machete it's, it's is. It's 1d4 plus two plus your damage bonus. Great. Let me pull up roll. All right, so Carter attacked the head. This did damage to it. It's vulnerable Uh-oh. in its head. I'm not damage. liking my brawl stats. I did not make it. <sighs> Drop the gun, pull out the knife, and just boom, it like dodges back uh, as it's still reeling from Carter's hit. It is Margo's turn. Still Wait, flailing. did the creature go? I think I skipped the creature. I think the oh. creature didn't go. I did skip the 
creature, didn't I? Yeah, I did. I skip assumed it, it was <laughs> staggered by my amazing mm -hmm. strategy. I got so excited when Jackson went, so it should have went uh, Jackson, <laughs> Carter, and the creature, and then right. Feyre's. So it will now go. Same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, Margo. Uh, three, four. Here we go. This one's on Margo. Sorry, Margo. No, you're now, not. Jackson is also nearby. Uh, that is true, Jackson is there. I didn't Your know. Honor. Well, I've already rolled it. Um, all right, so this is going to be a straight up brawl. No penalty, no bonus die. Here we go. Brawl. Uh, crack die. Failed. So it misses Good. as well, trying to reach out for Margo. Just, and you see Margo, there's something just crawling around inside of its head. Uh, and now it's your turn to act, Margo. Uh-oh. Well, I think now, um, I mean, it's the same role for me, whether I try to light it on fire or use my machete, but it comes at me and I see that like marble, maggot marble in there rolling around in its head. <laughs> um, Old maggot marble. I want to try to stab it in the eyes. Okay. All right, so machete. you just want to go right, uh, right at its uh, eye sockets. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see, brawl. 47 over 30, I'm spending luck to get it down to 30. So that's okay. 17 luck. 17 um, luck gone, give me the damage. 1d8. I never know. Okay, this one's an eight. Okay. Eight. Nice. Eight points of damage. Eight. Well. All right, so you <laughs> stab inside of its eye socket and the mummy collapses to the floor. <laughs> However, give me a luck roll. Okay, <laughs> but wait, I, got a, I got a minus 17 first, mm. right? Yes. Yeah, All yes right. you do. This is fine. Oh so now man, I didn't even think about the implications of this. You know what? Oh shit. I don't like you right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like a total valley. Uh, 42 Tricky over 35. Oh, so if you hadn't have spent it, hadn't you would have succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what happened. It, makes, it doesn't it matter. Makes it doesn't matter. Sense. Don't you see? It doesn't matter. Even if you die, then you'll just come back. You'll be dead, just like me. Vaughn's still muttering on the floor. Uh, you you strike with such precision into the eye socket that you shatter the skull. But because of the failed luck roll, you shatter the skull and you see bah, one of these Karasiri larvae come out and start crawling towards you. It's its action. It crawls <gasps> onto your face. <clears throat> and not unlike Feyre's in the thing, it's just like making its way towards your mouth. It like flies with lightning speed up your body and it's like trying to get in. I don't like it. Oh. It's Jackson's turn, and Jackson is like, <laughs> ah, ah, I can't, I, he, this, he's not trained in combat, he's a writer, and he's just like, I can't do it, I, I don't know what to do, what should we do? And he looks to you, Carter. Get a lamp, like last time, get a lamp, whack Bad me in the witch. face. Uh, they're one weakness. The gold bar. <laughs> Carter, <laughs> Carter yeah, the, yeah. Is, uh, uh, sees it going towards her mouth, and then he, he yells at Margo. He's like, give me that! And he, like, grabs the torch from her hand, and he goes to, like, hit, hit her in the face with it. Uh, oh he's like, he's like, this is gonna hurt! <laughs> ah, just trying to singe the larva. He's not trying, no, he's not trying to burn. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to use it as a bludgeoning tool. Right, just, okay. <laughs> The burning uh, will I'm just a be a fun side effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, in our first combat, I had given uh, you guys a penalty die to try and attack this, um, but that's not actually accurate. Um, it's really only get a penalty die for maneuvers when the size difference. Right. Is when I so tried to great. grab it, I remember that was a, a penalty. Yeah, die. that's when you get a penalty die. So for this, just a regular roll. No. See if you can. Uh, I learned my lesson, which is why I'm going to hit Margo in the face with a yeah. torch. Here comes the fumble. <laughs> And everybody in this crew will be wearing masks soon. Uh, I unfortunately, oh, I rolled an 80. I'm going to spend 10 luck to get it to a 70. Thank you. That <laughs> is a success. Oh. All right, give me a D6. Um, yes. That's a six. Ooh. It had five hit points. You yes! singe it and it crumples up and burns and just falls off of Margo's face. 
I'm sorry, that had to happen. I had to be awesome. <laughs> She's just like, ha, ah, like hasn't moved since it jumped on her. Had a flaming torch thrown at her face, but everything's fine. And it's just like, okay, all right. Are you, are you all right? right? Thank you so much. Oh, yes. We're all asking her if she's fine while Vaughn is, is <laughs> still okay? muttering. Are you going to be okay? Everything's okay. I don't know. I think I'll be fine, but I don't of know. Course I'm not we'll sure. Be okay. Everything's fine. Everything's wonderful, don't you see? Carter's like, Vaughn. Thanks, man. Thanks for the help. That was real, real helpful. No. Jackson's like, no, no, something's wrong with him. Something's I wrong. I point my machete at him because I saw him turn last time when he almost shot Nora. And I feel like this looks similar, even though I know game wise it's not similar. And, and Vaughn grabs your blade you. and like pushes it into his own throat. Like, <gasps> it's all right. No. It's all right. Don't no. you see? I'll just Beirut's come back. Just like that him. Same. Very much Already. just slaps him super hard. <laughs> Get over yourself, man. <laughs> And Does like that hands a him a flask of whiskey. Now? <laughs> is that a full rest? Jackson is like, stop, 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 and he just he comes over and 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 he he like he he holds holds Vaughn. He like gingerly uh, grabs you and and embraces you and just like pulls you in tight. And he's like, it's okay, it's okay, everything's okay. And he looks back at the rest of you and he's like, we so fine. He needs, he needs rest. He's not right. He's been slipping ever since we, every step we've taken. Ever since we left. Ever no, since we started this lately. adventure. He's so nurturing and I just slapped him. <laughs> <laughs> we should. And you can see me looking at you like with this really wounded, like, why did you, why? It's okay, it's okay. It seems to work all the time, bro. He looks up, he says, Margot, take one point of damage from the larva being on your face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I Fine. forgot to do that in the throes of all of this. <laughs> Shh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> lady bird, lady bird, fly away home. So one point of hit point damage. Um, we should, I don't know if we should press forward with him in this state. What do you think? Should we, should we go back to that room with the, the filthy reed mats? Should we just, should we go outside? I mean, I guess the mats are there for a reason. That's the that's the and parlor I, of this place. And uh, at least we know that there's only one entrance from there, so we wouldn't be attacked by different. Should something happen, I'm not saying it will. Freud. Right. We'll be nice and <laughs> we'll be nice and buried in the treasure room. <laughs> no way out. <laughs> uh, but well, you're right. We'll see them coming, and uh, I guess this guy's dead weight until we can get him in his shit together. Yeah, so when I'm reading about indefinite insanity, and I might be reading the wrong thing here, uh, but I'm going to go with it because it's more fun for where we're at. Basically, you just have this thing that has now affected you that has become like a semi-permanent part of your psyche. So it really couldn't happen to a better uh, person because now you're just going to have to role play this underlying insanity sure. that is going to last for possibly months um and we can decide together what is there this some is. nature of the of the right now i've just been like oh yeah death is it's meaningless yeah what i mean something love? about seeing Maybe this no one is. this dead creature rise up now you didn't know at the time when you lost your senses that it was being animated by the larva within it mm. so you just saw it as the dead rising and so yeah, there is something like uh, the, the, the you, what you were playing, I think, is perfect. The meaninglessness. What, what is death if you can just rise up again? There is no death. Fine. Is Jackson's, there... Jax is still holding you. Is there um, <clears throat> any... This is a long shot. But is there any way I could try to persuade Vaughn that things are not so bad? <laughs> Uh, not, sure. I'm, not saying to, I'm not saying to erase whatever, obviously, the, the game is the game, but just in terms of, you know. Here, have some treasure. Sure. Getting him on his feet, you know what I mean? Here's like, some cash. Yeah. Uh, no, Jackson's <laughs> holding him, and you come over, and you're like, can I talk to him? <laughs> Let me. Jackson, give me a sec. Uh, all right. Vaughn, do you remember Carter? Hey, beautiful boy. Hey, my sweet man. Of course, miss. Of course, Dilly asked. Yeah. Of course, I remember you. 
Great. Good. <laughs> I can rem- Carter- remember you. Yeah. Who, who could forget? Yeah, you're you're doing great. Carter turns to the everyone else and winks with winks at him, but he's he doesn't realize he winked on the other side of his mask. <laughs> so it just looks, looks like he <laughs> just turned everybody and like hard stared at them for a second and then <laughs> turned back. Uh Vaughn, Billiards, listen. Things got real back there, okay? Yes. But you've seen you've seen some intense stuff in your life, and guess what? You're still here. You're still Thanks. with us. We're You're gonna still. be fine. Of course. Okay? Now I sh- I'm gonna roll these dice now real quick. I'm gonna roll <laughs> persuade. I don't know, does okay. that work? Does that yeah. work against the player? I like it. Okay. See if it's enough to get him get him going again. Just get, you know, just figure it out. Um I rolled a 44 under 65. All right, so something in his words touched you, Fawn, as you're coming out of this. While you fell into this stupor during the combat and wasn't able to take part, something in his words meant something to you. All right. And have we gone back to that little alcove? Uh, or, uh, yeah, for sure. Like, while yeah. you're regrouping, maybe uh, Jackson yeah. took you over there so you could just, like, all talk it out instead mm-hmm. of standing in this dark hallway together. Yes, thank you, Tilly. Yes, thank you. Of course. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I don't... I'm terribly sorry, so it's your shame-making. Uh, yeah, having a bit of... Just a bit of shock. Yeah, it's definitely embarrassing for you. But uh, yeah. I'm glad that you made me look cool uh, in front of the other three. So I appreciate that. You're still a stand-up guy. Of course. They're quite cool. Yes, Zangfroid second to none. You look marvelous, stilling ass, marvelous. Yeah, you've never looked better. Yeah. Oh, gonna be glad to serve. We'll get you everywhere. All right. <laughs> yeah, and pull up a goblet here and rest your head. Yes, boy. <laughs> yeah. I think and I pull well, out that little that little chubby statue with the with the <laughs> ape, and I'm just kind of like Whoever could also come. He's fine, guys. He seems pretty good. <laughs> oh, God. Margo, what are you doing? Um, I think that while this is happening, like she's putting two and two, whatever, together, um, with the whole like that thing was dead, but the maggot was animating it. And it's like these maggots like crawl into people and ravage their insides, maybe, but like control them like they're puppets and like she's thinking back to the um, woman and the young girl that they saw at the town they were at that later like turned at some point and it's like maybe they're always infected with a maggot and then the maggots decide to just make them become the other thing so that said there is a pile of dead bodies that we had to walk through to crawl into all of this. And I think we should light it on fire before we go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> before any, uh, before the worm finds them? Yeah. Yes, that idea. is a good idea. But if Mr. Villiers is, is in his right mind, perhaps we press on the perimeter of this pyramid if it follows uh, what the uh, outline of the building is upstairs, we've we've almost covered all of it. Surely we'll find what we're looking for, and then we'll burn the bodies and and rest and be done with this place. Oh, okay, yes. If we're not resting now, then let's keep going, but it, I would strongly suggest we burn everything if we yes. decide to rest, yes. Yes, that is yes. wise, Miss Sauer. Um, Vaughn, are you all right to still lead the pack? Thanks to our kind words of Mr. Tillinghast here. Everyone's admirable, admirable courage under pressure. And your um, very quite nurturing attitude, Mr. Hughes. I, I confess that um, I am uh, rather abashed at how I've acted. And I assure you, I am feeling much more steady. Shan't break again. Hearing why, why would you, I? hearing you call him by his alias, he, he he taps you on the shoulder and and looks to Feyruz and says, "Maybe, maybe uh, 
Maybe Feyruz could uh, stand up front and you protect her uh, from behind. Uh, would, would that be all right, Feyruz? I think you are a crack shot. Maybe give Mr. Villiers a break. Or... Yeah, I think maybe, uh, and, and to spare uh, to spare Vaughn's feeling, maybe we all take turns at some point leading on. That's a great yes. idea. Great well, idea. we'll talk about it when we, when we get there, yeah. Uh, capital, like capital. Uh, yes. and then well, all of you just, have shown yourselves. And then, then just behind Vaughn's back, just she will, uh, you see Feyruz make hand gestures towards Margot to keep an eye on on Vaughn, seeing as his behavior has been very um, questionable. She gives you a very curt nod. Got you. Well then, let's press on. And so you continue moving down that corridor past the <clears throat> now deceased mummy. You see another shaft uh, leading upwards. Um, I'll ping it on the map where you see it. Again, another one of these chimneys, but it's closed, so there's no light coming down. And then uh, the corridor shifts to south and continues south for a while, about halfway down. Yet again, another one of these chutes. And they all match up exactly with the pyramid if you slide over and look at the other map. Then, Feyruz, you turn now back to the east. And as you get to that corner and your torchlight fills the tunnel ahead, you see a pool of some sort. Oh no. It looks like uh, there is a, a, a crack in the wall above the pool, about two inches wide, and it's running through a recess from the floor of the tunnel up to uh, a piece of the wall where the gold is missing. <sighs> and the hole is filled with a pool of rancid looking white substance. Yeah, that did that look like a vomit crack? That's the puke, puke hole. It looks like where they vomited was into the middle of the pyramid. This looks like a crack in the wall that is leaking some sort of substance into a pool that has formed in the tunnel blocking passage further, but above the tunnel is a broken piece of the gold inlay that you assume can only be reached by entering this pool. And we'll see you next week. Oh no. No! You have to enter the pool of vomit. Enter the white enter the moving pool. <laughs> 